Welcome to Paris, France, the city of lights and romance. When I'm in Paris, I just dream of the great food the city has to offer, and of course, something great to drink, bubbly, the way only the French know how to make. Hostelier La Briqueterie is an oasis of gastronomic delight. Chef Michael Nizero has promised us a great meal. Michael hails from Belgium. He has garnered his rising star reputation thanks to his diversified background. Uh, my dad is actually from Italy, so I've got a bit of origin from, from Italy. We will get the opportunity today to try three outstanding recipes. A garden vegetable gnocchi, followed by a house favorite, a langoustine tartar, and to end the perfect meal, variations of strawberry and rhubarb. Later on, I'm headed to the beautiful region of Champagne, which is only a 45 minute train ride from here. And such great timing as I've been invited to be part of a jury of a very prestigious dessert competition. So join me, Ashley James, in Paris for another exciting adventure of cuisine culture. I'm Chef Ashley James. When I'm not catering to the demands of stars in LA, I'm touring the world cooking with culinary geniuses. Take your gourmet passport and learn how to cook like a master chef and eat like a celebrity. Just look at this amazing view, the beautiful vineyards of Champagne. All this walking around, I feel pretty hungry. As I promised you earlier, I'm here at the Hotel de la Briqueterie to meet the chef, Michael Nizero. At only 28 years old, he received his first Michelin star. His experience working as head chef in Dubai and also at the three-star Michelin restaurant in England, the Waterside Inn, has certainly paid off. His balance of subtle spices with fresh seasonal produce creates a refreshing experience for the palate. Thanks to his knowledge of French and world cuisine, he's making a mark in Champagne and attracting foodies from around the world, like myself. So here I am with the young rising star himself. And young, I thought I was young, but really this guy is young. Okay, so what are we going to be cooking today, Michael? Uh, we're going to do uh, gnocchi to okay. start. Uh, it's a personal uh, recipe from my grandmother. Uh, my dad is actually from Italy. So I like to put Italian flavor in my, in my cuisine. Super. Uh, so yeah, it's a recipe that I've changed a little bit uh, that I remember. We will prepare an original vegetarian dish inspired by Michael Nizero's Italian background. Why do I say original? The shape is not what you would expect. Chef Michael rolls out his dough, cuts it into small sheets and makes sleeves. He boils them and then pan sautés them. He finishes the dish with fresh garden vegetables and an artichoke sauce. So these beautiful potatoes, baked potatoes, nice and soft, I'm going to cut them in two. Michael is going to spoon them out. I say Michael, you know, Michael. Mm. <laughs> Once I've pureed the potato, we're going to add the flour, the egg, the parmesan cheese, uh, the salt and the potato starch. What's important also uh, with the potato is to make small hole in it. Yeah. So uh, all the humidity really goes out of the potato as max, as maximum as possible. That, that's actually a great tip and also so the potato doesn't explode in the oven. Um, Michael is making a well, a very traditional way of, uh, of making doughs, something that we learn at school or from, from family members. Again, it's a very traditional uh, way to do and then slowly incorporating, incorporating the dry ingredients, exactly. the potato starch, the flour. So slowly we're going to start to work everything in. That yeah. looks a nice dough. Nice, light. Yeah. So you don't, as every, any dough, you don't want to over, over overwork. overwork it. Exactly. That's right. You just need to work it enough. So really you want the dough to take all the flour. That's great. So that's our dough. It goes on fine. That's beautiful. It's nice and soft, but all combined together. Yeah. Great. So what's next? So Form I'm just going out. to yeah, flower the table a little bit. Well nicely, flower the table. Everywhere. Yeah. Great. So it's a dough is taking uh, quite a good amount of flour. Mm. So, so now uh, I'm going to show you uh, what I'm doing here. Your way. My way. way. Exactly. So I thought, why not, you know, making leaves and sheets, yeah. sheet of of gnocchi, so they're nice and, and light, you know, and it's easier to eat. So obviously you don't want anything to stick to the table. Right. Now that you have a nice and thin sheet, we're okay. just gonna 
cut everything out. So basically, they're sheets, exactly. sheets of gnocchi. And I have never seen that before, I must say. That is, uh, that's pretty unique. So then we just place them on, on a small uh, baking paper. Ba baking, baking paper, baking, baking wax paper. paper. Yeah, just to avoid them to stick, yeah, the right. potato. Next thing, we're just going to cook them, All classically. Right. Uh, salty water, olive oil. Uh, so it takes really, uh, I would say, uh, a minute, uh, 30, 40 seconds, uh, boiling water. When Until they, they come, to, come the to the top, exactly. We take them out and we just shock them in ice water. Shock them in ice water. Yeah. Great, awesome. So, yeah. so we're just putting them on the cloth to remove the excess moisture. Do we put a bit of uh, olive oil? Yeah, here? we can. Yeah, just to oil. make sure it doesn't, it doesn't stick. stick. Yeah. So just a touch of olive oil. This delicious olive oil. Where, where are you getting your olive oil from? South of France? South of France, exactly. Yeah. Beautiful. Three. We're going to do four? We do four. Yeah. yeah. We do a small starter. Yeah, four. Beautiful. Now, yeah. what we can do, we can put a little uh, Parmesan cheese on top. Love that. And uh, just, you know, spread it lightly. Right. This will color and uh, start to uh, gratinated and it will give a bit of texture then it will be Great. a bit crunchy and a lot of flavor as well so this we put under a grill of salamander oil grill great just until it becomes golden brown so we just need to saute the vegetables the I've made a couple of sauce wow. uh, go, to go with it. Huh? Give a nice, you get a nice artichoke flavor and it's a little bit you know, acid with the lemon Great. and then you get the sweetness of the butter who Super. brings it together. Mm. Gnocchi is glazing beautifully there under the salamander. You get oh. a bit of texture here with the parmesan cheese. That's great. Now everything comes to taste. If you prefer, prefer them uh, not too crunchy or if you don't like the strong parmesan cheese you can, taste, you can color it less like I did here. I can see a nice plate here. Exactly, it's the Im imagination then take on, that's what beautiful okay. in cooking also. So here we are, a bit of vegetable, I like to leave them out so we see them, it's nice, beautiful, bright color. Yeah. Very oh. nicely around. Beautiful, like a lion or? Yeah. That looks good. Beautiful. The asparagus coolie. And the little barigoule. Uh, the foam bit, this that looks amazing, that looks really beautiful. I'm gonna just finish it with the touch. That, that truffle oil from the exactly, pan. Exactly, from the pan, it brings... Here we're not wasting nothing, and of course you know, truffle oil, and it's, it's not truffle, it's not that truffle oil from a bottle, that is summer truffles. <laughs> smells delicious. So a little bit of fresh churl. There we are. And voila, just look at that, how beautiful it is. I think it is amazing and very courageous, you know, here, here we are in France and you've done a, a vegetarian dish. Yes. So I want to congratulate you on thank that. Thank you, thank you. I think it's great. We'll make an innovative langoustine tartare. This appetizer is used by amazing raw langoustines, shelled and diced into medium pieces. The langoustine is tossed with chives, red and green chili. It is then mixed with a delicious citrus vinaigrette. Michael is peeling this beautiful langoustine. And shall I take care of the vinaigrette maybe? You can take, take care of the vinaigrette, yeah. Great, good. So for the vinaigrette, we need three delicious juices, the lime, the blood orange, and the lemon. Beautiful color, huh? Yeah, it's the blood orange, it's the yeah. food season now, so it gives. I always like to put the salt with the juice, or acid, vinegar. It helps to dissolve the salt, some pepper, and then we're going to emulsify this, yeah? Really 
It's a little olive oil. Probably it's the same. You just want to get a nice vinegar. A nice vinegar. Vinaigrette, just look at that. Perfect. So it's warm, good. So we've got the sweetness of the langoustine, the bitterness of the salad, then the spice, a little spice. And, and the citrus. So, so really we've there's got a lot going on, but it all complements and respects. And exactly, and it brings out very important the, the langoustin. Frise salad. Right, frise, yeah. Yeah, a couple of leaves here. Yeah, I've got beetroot leaves, uh, chard, you know, uh, red chard. You can use any, any, any salad you want again. I remember this caviar. They do a cesarean operation, they take out the eggs, they sew the fish back up, don't they? Exactly, yeah. And then it swims again, and it produces more caviar. Uh, at least three, four years after. Yeah, yeah. so that's yeah. great. And just to give a little crunch. The Melba toast. Voilà, Melba toast was a, was a classic uh, way to serve caviar classic, with. Classic, classic component of, uh, of caviar, Melba toast. Then it gives a bit of... Just very, very thin, thinly slices of um, pandumi or, or white bread. Yeah. Toast it lightly on both sides. We cut off the crusts. We cut it in the middle into small pieces and then bake it again in the oven or a... Or a um, a low salamander or grill. Michala looks really good. I think we need to try it. Here's That's a fork. Right. But you know what? What are we missing? It's some freshness, some drinks. Some bubbles? Yeah, right. Okay, not? so I think we should have a delicious glass of the champagne. Here we go. Thank you. Well, cheers. Cheers. There we go. Let's try this. So, the beautiful, sweet langoustine. Color, beautiful. Mm. Let's go to the garden and check the vegetables out, yeah? Then let's go. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, we're lucky well, enough to have a helipad here, so we've got special guests coming for lunch, enjoying lunch here and dinner. So yeah, they come for a quick, a quick, a quick lunch uh, with a. Uh, Quick way of coming. Good lunch, but quick travel. Yeah, exactly, huh? exactly. So then we've got the mint, uh, verbena. Uh, yeah. We're gonna use later on the verbena in the, yeah. into the dessert. Rhubarb over there. We're gonna use later on in the dessert. Great. Yeah, I mean, we're lucky enough to have a beautiful place here. For sure. And, For sure. and we, we have got a good three team of gardeners who are taking well care of. Three gardeners. That's amazing. Uh, that yeah. are taking well, well care, mm. well care of all of this. So I will really show you how champagne is Good, made and great. here is the production site. Okay. Yes, so you will see all the production lines. The domain. Exactly. Great. So in fact it's a very busy time right now because we are preparing the harvest. This is the Côte des Blancs area, the Chardonnay area here. Okay. So, so mainly, mainly Chardonnay yes. grape. We work a lot with the Chardonnay grape. It's supposed to be the king grape to make champagne. Okay. During the harvest time, it's easier for us to press the grapes right away and then to bring the juices here, okay. exactly where the grapes come from, even from which parcel. Okay. okay. And then we will bring them and press them separately, depending on their origin. Okay. For traditional champagne, what happens is that we keep still white wines from the previous years and we will mix them with the wine from the year in order to be able to make always the same champagne more. That's why on a traditional bottle of champagne, there is no year written on. That's right. That will be the difference with the vintage champagne. Today, we have around 300 barrels. So as I told you, we will use it only for specific cuvee, for specific wines okay. that will give um, those very typical vanilla flavors, smoked flavor. 
Anna, thank you so much for showing everything to oh, me. Oh, you're welcome. Explaining everything to me. Let's go and get a bit of sun maybe yes. before doing This is paradise. Just look how beautiful yes. it is. So look at this parcel here. Okay. Yeah. It's a very old parcel that we own. And we will use the grapes only from this parcel to make only one cuvée, which is called the Clos des Bouvries. Okay. Okay, it's a vintage champagne and um, it's 100% uh, Chardonnay grapes. And the vineyard here is more than 40 years old. 40 years so, old. So, yes, the grapes are very concentrated with sugar. And well okay. established. Yes. Is, is this the oldest uh, parcel of grapes that it's you have? It's one of the oldest, one yes. One of the oldest. Uh -huh. And I think something so special is all the passion and love that's put in, into this product. Uh -huh. So, so Ashley, I'm glad you enjoyed again, it. Again, thank you. Okay. Chin chin. Merci, Anna. Merci. Terroir is what the French say when they want to say food tastes like the earth and the region that it comes from. We can actually taste the terroir in the dessert variations of rhubarb and strawberry. We will use the strawberries and rhubarb that are grown in Michael's garden. We make a vanilla scented strawberry consomme. Then we poach rhubarb in the same consomme. Next layer the poached rhubarb in a mold with garden strawberries and strawberry consomme gelée. Top this luscious creation with strawberry mousse and rhubarb sorbet. The appetizer and the main course just love them, so we just need a great dessert. And, and this is Christophe. Christophe. Uh, Christophe. Nice to meet you, bonjour. He's our pastry chef for uh, been here for many years, so he knows the place uh, okay. and the champagne very well. Good, amazing. So what are we going to be doing with these beautiful ingredients? I mean, what have we got? So this preparation, what we're doing, it is just the liquor that we're going to be cooking the rhubarb in. Yeah. So that's going to go to bain-marie, a water bath, for about 30 minutes to render all those juices. Once that has been there for 30 minutes and it has been strained, we need to strain it through a, a cheesecloth. We end up with this beautiful red, mm, like a strawberry consomme. Yeah, exactly. Strawberries, the citrus, citrus. the lemon verbena, the yeah. mint, the vanilla. I love that. So this is just the cooking liquor for the rhubarb. So this is, is hot. So what do we need to do next with the rhubarb? We need to prep the rhubarb. Okay. Again, uh, depending on the rhubarb you get, most of the time in the shop, you're gonna get very thick, mm. uh, big pieces of rhubarb. Then you gonna have, you might have to, to peel them. Here it's very tender, nice and soft, nice it and tender, very look, fresh. Looks good. If you have to peel them, you just take the skin out. Right, uh, with like the knife. Yeah, with the knife. Now, what I'm gonna do, because they're nice, and tender, I'm just gonna cut them uh, right. into, into, the, into the bowl. We're going to bring this beautiful strawberry consomme to a very gentle boil. Yeah. We're gonna throw in the rhubarb, let it come to a boil one more time, and the minute it starts to boil, we need to take it away from the heat and then leave the rhubarb to cool. All right, just soften That's into right. the liquid. And slowly, slowly, as you keep it overnight, it's even better to keep it one night, so it will really take the color <clears throat> and the flavor. Great. So it's even better a day after. I'm gonna put this to one side, because this one is actually the you prepared yesterday. We did the yeah. Very thin slice of Granny Smith apple, and that has been lightly poached in exactly the same jus, consomme yeah. syrup, that we poached the rhubarb in. Christophe is a chemise, as they, as, chemise. as they say in French, like a shirt, a thin lining of the uh, poached apple in the mold. Then he's placing oh, pieces of the delicious poached rhubarb. Some strawberries. Christophe has added three leaves of gelatin and he's put some of that, the, the jelly between each layers and that's gonna help it set up, but set very lightly. So we're gonna leave that to chill in the refrigerator. I'm sure you have one ready, no? Je crois qu'il a un qui a fait, no? 
Qui le fait J'imagine, oui. Okay. So again, it's something you can do in advance, and then last minute you just have to put the ouais. little uh, square on the plate and finish with a little ouais. ice cream or sorbet or anything. Awesome. So, uh, Michael explained to us a little bit about mm. the speculos. So, speculos is a very uh, famous biscuit yeah. uh, coming from Belgium, obviously, and it's made with uh, cassonade sugar, uh, butter, and flour. Yeah. So, that's the cassonade and also uh, speculos Pardon. spice, we call it. It's, it's a mix of different spices, it's a bit. Is that over. a secret too? Exactly. Okay. So, it's this cardamom inside, cinnamon. Looks great. So, what is next? So Christophe has made a sort of a, a crunchy sugar cage, which is made with glucose, sugar, which is boiled together. Caramel. Sort of caramel. Brown, just like brown caramel, then we just put it on the tray, let it cool down, or rock up. Okay. Then we just blitz it into a powder, fine into powder. powder. And then from this, you can do any shape you like. This is a little trick we do here at the restaurant, or for home, I, I suggest you just do the, the little fruit and the biscuit, you know. That's good, this, okay. On a confectionné une sauce rhubarbe. Une sauce rhubarbe. A boiled syrup with rhubarb. The rhubarb's cooked. It's blended. And with a little bit of lemon juice just to give it some brightness. A strawberry mousse. Wow. And maybe at home you could substitute the strawberry mousse for some whipped cream, maybe? Exactly. Yeah. yeah? Mm. Or some whipped cream with some fresh chopped strawberries in, yeah. it would be a little bit yeah. easier. So as long as you respect the flavors. Some chocolate, a decoration of chocolate. He knows his piping skills, yeah. doesn't he? Huh? I think he's done that before. You've been to Belgium for, to, to learn. Oh really? Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> you know what I think today, there's great chocolate throughout, throughout, the, uh, throughout the world, but of course the Belgium and the Swiss, and the French. So a little bit more coolie. The, the rhubarb coolie. Christophe, that looks beautiful. Great looks color, good. pinkish, Great. fresh, spring. Fresh. So a, a rhubarb sorbet, and again, obviously this is a delicious uh, rhubarb sorbet that Christophe has, has made with rhubarb syrup, a bit, a bit of lemon juice, yeah? yeah exactly. Uh, turbine in the, the mm, ice cream, cream sorbet machine. machine. Yeah. However, you know, I mean, you could also replace it with a delicious, store bought, you know, you can find good quality yeah, ice cream. Vanilla ice cream, even with strawberries. Strawberry sorbet would be good. Yeah. Excellent. Well, that, that's beautiful. Spoon for Merci. you. Merci. Mm, so where do I start? Tu commences avec quoi? Moi, je commencerai par la mousse. Par la mousse. Okay, so I'm going to break this beautiful dessert. Okay. Wow, it's crunch. Can you hear that crunch there? Delicious. Wow. Take a little bit of the sorbet. Mm. Well, you know, what can I say? I finished my trip here with this amazing dessert. Thank you so much Thank for you. you know sharing your recipes. I love the gnocchi, I think it's very different. I really love the touch of the chili with the langostinos, yeah. Thank the you. freshness of the citrus. A young rising star, so let's keep our eyes open on this one. Um, so, thank you so much. Thank you very much. And à bientôt. Thank you. À bientôt. And I've been invited to take part in the jury of a very prestigious cooking contest here in Paris to find this dessert which is going to go good with champagne. So Carol, she's going to take me to the kitchen and um, she's going to present all the chefs to me. Well, we all know American Idol for the music, but believe you me, this is the French Idol. And here it's all about food. We've just had eight desserts. Seven people out of 12 decided that the first contestant has won the competition. That's quite something. Come on in, we're going to have a glass of champagne and we're going to see who's won this amazing competition.
thank you so much and I look forward to seeing you on another exciting adventure of cuisine culture soon. For recipes, tips and information about today's program, visit us online at www.cuisineculture.tv. No, c'est vrai. Fresh eggs, there's nothing better than fresh eggs. Ouais. Et on va voir s'il y a les œufs dans une ou dans l'autre. Two voilà. beautiful houses in Champagne. Hey, 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 hey. Allez, tu files. Allez. Voilà. Wow. Ça, c'est encore tout chaud. Ah, oh. Tout chaud. C'est chaud. Wow. These eggs are so fresh that they're still warm. And you can hear the chicken. I mean, you can't get much fresher than that. On cherche la ciboulette, non? Ouais. Ça, c'est pas très chouette. So lucky for the harvest, no? Mm. Les vendanges. Yes, ça c'est merveilleux. That's great. I'm gonna give it some good, good champagne this year.